Hey Gathering, it's Kyle. Uh, you are actually sitting right now in my office. Uh, it's Monday afternoon, and I'm excited to be sharing the diving deeper with you guys. Um, this past Sunday, we talked about waiting, uh, and we read from John chapter 5. And in John chapter 5, man, there's a lot of history there. In those four short chapters previous, there's a lot of things that happen, and it just kind of goes boom, 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 boom. It's really quick. Um, you see Jesus going and talking to all the disciples, and then he meets with Nicodemus, and then the woman at the well. And then we come to the Pool of Bethesda. Uh, the Pool of Bethesda is a really neat place. Uh, it's in the shadow of the temple, right, in Jerusalem, within the city walls. Um, and it's right by where John chapter 5 calls the Sheep Gate. Now, the Sheep Gate was actually the place where uh, they would bring in sheep for sacrifices. This is where people would bring in the sheep. The shepherds would bring their sheep in uh, and bring them to the marketplace so that way they could be uh, sacrificed for their sins. Um, and it was really interesting to me that Jesus came through this area, the same place um, where the sheep were brought through, and he came to the Pool of Bethesda, which was, it, it's actually called a mikvah uh, in Jewish tradition. It means it was a ceremonial cleansing pool. This is where people would go to uh, be washed before the ceremonies, or, and, and it's quite possible that they even started washing their sheep there before they brought them to the market. And so in this place where you have uh, just a lot of action going on, it also ended up being the place where uh, the, the lame, the paralyzed, uh, the, the blind would come and just waiting to be healed because it was said that the pool of Bethesda would bubble up uh, as the angel of the Lord came and touched it. And the first person to jump in would be healed. Now, then we read in John chapter 5, it says uh, that there was a man who had been uh, ill for 38 years. This passage isn't meant to talk about how, how long we should wait for things to happen. It's not a lesson in patience, but there is a lot that we can learn from it. Um, 38 years. I want you to think about that. 38 years. How, how, what is the longest you've ever waited for something? It could be anything. Whether you're waiting for a burger, whether you're waiting <laughs> through the Chick-fil-A line, it doesn't take very long. Uh, or are you waiting for the salvation of a friend or a loved one? Are you waiting for a uh, riffle in a, in a relationship, a friendship to be resolved? Are you waiting for healing? Are you waiting for an addiction to be uh, taken away from you? There's a lot of things that we wait on in life. And I find it neat that this guy waited 38 years, waiting patiently for 38 years before he saw the slightest glimmer of hope. And that was whenever Jesus walked through the door and asked him, would you like to get well? The cool thing is that Jesus asks us the same thing. He says, do you want to stop having to wait? Do you want to find uh, finalization in these things that we're waiting on? And he asks us, do you want to go ahead and have this resolved? And oftentimes we answer like the man did. The man said, uh, I can't because I don't have anyone to lower me into the water. Sometimes our answers to Jesus' question of, do you want uh, me to take care of the situation? We don't answer it in, the, in a way that it was asked. We don't actually answer the question. We answer a side question that Jesus asks. We think ahead of him. And we try and go ahead and solve our problems ourselves. But what Jesus asks is, do you want to be healed? Do you want your situation to be fixed? 
because he is the one that can actually do something about it. So this is diving deeper. Uh, I want you to think about what are things that you're waiting on in life? What are some things that you struggle with that you have prayed for God to take away, that you have found uh, prayer groups to join and to, to have people pray with you? All those things are good. Those are the steps that we need to take. Absolutely. But we can't expect that Jesus is going to uh, take away those problems in the ways that we want him to. He uses different means. That man thought he was going to touch the water and be healed. Yet Jesus said with a few short words, Get up. Take your mat. It was totally different than what the man had expected. But guess what? Sometimes waiting like that leads to a miracle brought about by other means than what we expected. So what are you waiting for? What question is Jesus asking you? What means are you expecting of Jesus and hoping for? And are you looking for any other means? Are you waiting for him to respond? Are you listening for his voice? What are you waiting for? How are you going to wait for it? And how long are you going to wait? Those are a few questions I've got for you this week. I hope you can... Dive deeper into discussion with your family and friends. And if you're in the small group, man, just just pour it all out. That's what small group is for, right? We get to share closely with one another what we're going through in our lives. So, I hope this has helped uh, kind of break down what we talked about in John chapter 5. Dive deep today. What are you waiting for? How long are you going to wait for it? And how can you wait better? <music>